sides. Is that a weird choice? Focus on triangles. Got questions about angles or sides? Or are you too distracted by furry felines? I am quite distracted by furry felines, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, let's take a look at some differentiation rules. We wanna find the derivative of seven x cubed minus 10 x to the power of seven. We are going to leave this seven alone, take the derivative of x cubed using the power rule, which is three x squared. So we'll bring the three down, subtract one from that power, and we'll do the same thing over here with x to the seven. So seven will come down, and then we'll have seven take away one for x to the power of six. So our derivative would look something like 21 x squared minus 70 x to the power of six. Okay, question two, if f of x is four over x squared, we wanna find f prime evaluated at one. I would suggest in this particular case, it's helpful to rewrite this as four times x to the minus two. And then we can apply the power rule. So when we go to take the derivative of f, we can keep this four the same, and then we'll bring down our minus two, and then we'll subtract one from the power. And that gives us a derivative of negative eight x to the negative three, or if we wanted to, we could write this as negative eight over x to the three by making that negative three positive again. We can move that x down into the denominator to do that. Now we want to evaluate this at one. So let's go ahead and substitute one into our fraction. We'll get negative eight over one, which is equal to negative eight. So I do want to use fractional exponents in order to use the power rule, but I guess they want us to convert stuff back to square roots or positive powers after we're done. Okay, that doesn't seem unreasonable because I don't think these derivatives are gonna be too terrible. So just like we've been doing before, we can leave our two the same. We'll use the power rule. So half X to the minus half I also just remembered that I need to turn our music down, otherwise YouTube's gonna get mad at me. So we're going in, in music cognito mode for a little bit. And then similar over here, we'll, we'll keep our nine the same, we'll bring this negative nine down, and I think with the subtract one, so it's gonna get to negative 10. Yeah, I think that's, I'm okay with that. And then it looks like these will just divide out to give us one. So we're gonna be left with x to the minus half plus 81 x to the minus 10. So both of these x's can now get put back into their respective denominators and that's gonna cause those powers to become positive. So here we'll get 81 x to the 10 and then the last thing that we'll wanna do here is just convert that one half back to a square root. So one over root x should do the trick. And then we need an 81 over x to the 10. Four x root x. I see what's happening here. They're trying to trick us. So we need to find the derivative, then we need to evaluate it at one. Finding the derivative. So let's rewrite f of x in a more seductive way. We could really say this is four x times x to the one half, couldn't we? And then we could probably say we have five x to the minus two and then x to the minus one half. So let's just pop everything up into the numerator. And since we have multiplication of like bases of x here, we can add those powers together. So I haven't taken a derivative yet. I'm just trying to clean this up to make it a bit easier for me to take the derivative. Uh, there's really a one here. So this is one plus one half, which is 1.5 or three halves. And then we have negative two take away another half. So negative 2.5 is negative five over two and negative x to the negative five over two. Does that sound about right? I think that sounds okay. So now that we've combined this stuff together, we should be able to take the derivative a little bit easier. Leave our four the same, we'll bring down our three halves. x to the three halves take away one. 
three halves take away one, that's gonna get me back to one half. And then five, negative five over two, x to the negative five over two, take one more. That should get us to negative seven over two, or negative 3.5. And what I would probably do here is I know that I'm evaluating at a relatively nice number, so I'm just going to sub 1 in, and then we can simplify later. So we'll get 4 times 3 halves times 1 plus 5 times negative 5 over 2 times 1. Does this simplify to something nice? What's f Okay, so we have 4 over 2, so 2 times 3, that's 6 negative 25 poopy Good morning. poopy hello stooky how are you doing good morning. good morning to you so i get negative 13 halves or what's that going to be negative 6.5 that seems pretty reasonable to me oh we're doing double derivatives here that's fun so we have a function of t. We want to find its derivative, evaluate it at 4. Let's start by doing that. So h prime of t. I think we can probably start doing this right away. I think everything is reasonably good for us to do that. So we're going to have 5. We're going to bring this power down. So 3.2t. And we're going to subtract 1 from that power. That's going to get us to 2.2. And then we have to do the same thing over here. So we'll bring our negative 3.2 down and subtract another one to get the negative 4.2. And they want, and they just want h prime at four. I'd probably just, I guess, you know, we're going to find the second derivative actually. So it's probably beneficial for us to clean this up a little bit so that we can find that second derivative. It's calculator time. I could probably do this, but I don't want to. Okie dokie, five times 3.2 is six, oh, that's nice, 16 t to the 2.2. And then we're gonna need eight times 3.2, so we should get positive here and this should be positive 25.6 so positive 25.6 t to the negative 4.2 so there's our answer for the first box second answer we're just going to substitute 4 in here so we can just set up an expression in our calculator to do this work for us. So 16 times 4 to the 2.2 plus 25 and a bit times 4 to the negative 4.2. We got it. Hey, okay, so 337.87. I don't know how many decimal places they want. It doesn't really say. I'd go with at least two, maybe a couple more. You could even, you know, run it up to like four decimal places if you wanted to. So use your discretion here. It doesn't tell me, but probably, probably four is good enough. It might also want the exact answer. It looks like maybe this is an exact answer. So you could always put all of these decimal. Actually, let's take a look. What does it want? Oh, okay. So hopefully there's a little bit of like error bounds there. So as Stuckey's posting up that question if he wants to, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the derivative of the derivative, that's the second derivative. So we'll keep the 16, we'll bring 2.2 down, subtract one. We're gonna keep our 25.6. We need to bring down the negative 4.2 and then subtract one. Now from here, we probably could just rifle in the number four. We don't really need to simplify this derivative. Uh, I'm sure that this box will accept this answer, although we can simplify these a little bit if you want to. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and start multiplying some stuff. So we need 16 times 2.2 times four to the power of 1.2. Let's add our 25.6 times negative 4.2 times four to the power of negative 5.2. So just subbing in four for T, I got about 185.71. And again, you might wanna feed in a few more decimal places there because uh, it's not really explicit in how many it wants in the question. Um, although I'm certain there's probably gonna be a little bit of error bounds for it here. So as long as you're within a certain range. Um, and like I said, you know, up to maybe four decimal places might be nice here just to give it enough buffer room so that uh, you're not running into any issues. Oh, this is fun. Why don't we just, we'll just finish up 1.1 here. Then that way, when we're looking at some of the chat questions, we can, we can throw some music back up. Uh, this one shouldn't take too long. We're just finding a whole bunch of higher order derivatives. Uh, wait, isn't this just zero? Oh, no, it's not. So G at zero is three, because I'm going to get zero plus zero plus three. G prime. This is sneaky. Okay, so G prime at zero might be zero. So we're going to get three times four T cubed plus four times two T. So yeah, G prime at zero will be zero because I have 12 T cubed plus eight T. Now, if I want to take the second derivative of this, what are we going to get? We're going to get 12 times 3, which is 36t squared plus 8. So our double derivative at 0 should be 8. This is kind of an interesting question. So our triple derivative is 36 times 2, which is 72t. And then the eight disappears. So our triple prime at zero should be zero. Uh, our fourth derivative, so g to the four would be 72. And then of course, if we take another derivative after this, we should end up with zero.